Acids and bases, or alkalis, get their characteristic properties from how they interact with hydrogen ions. One way of defining an acid is a substance that donates a hydrogen ion, also called a proton, in solution. Conversely, a base is a substance that can accept a proton. The strength of an acid is determined by the extent to which it dissociates in solution. Strong acids, like hydrochloric acid, fully dissociate, donating a proton to the surrounding water molecules. Conversely, weak acids do not fully dissociate. The overall movement of charge between the acid and solvent is much smaller. Another constant to measure the degree of dissociation of a molecule in solution is the pKa, or logarithmic acid dissociation constant. It's defined as the pH at which a compound is 50% ionized. A compound's pKa influences the key physical properties of drug-like molecules. Knowing the pKa is important for pharmaceutical research. It allows us to predict its ADMET profile, activity, distribution, metabolism, excretion and toxicity. As pharmaceutical synthesis is a lengthy and expensive process, pre-screening of potential drug candidates is vital to ensure that they possess desirable properties. Having the ability to predict the pKa is incredibly valuable. Paul Popelier, Professor of Computational Chemistry at the Manchester Institute of Biotechnology and colleague Dr. Bethan Kane have found an exciting solution. Using quantum chemistry computational methods, the research team have developed an accurate method of predicting a molecule's pKa from its molecular geometry. The challenge with these types of simulations to make them into truly predictive tools is to find ways to test their accuracy and use them to understand which parts of the molecular structure determine the final pKa. Using quantum chemical calculations to obtain bond distances, the Manchester Institute of Biotechnology team have studied and compared hundreds of different molecules. They've shown that a simple linear relationship exists between the equilibrium bond lengths, that is, the distance between atoms for a stable arrangement of a molecule, and its pKa value. Across a series of compounds, some bond lengths get shorter as others get longer, as pKa decreases and the compound becomes more acidic. Here, this molecule is more acidic than the one below it. The bond length variation with pKa can be explained by the electronic effect of the constituent atoms on certain parts of the molecule. For this type of compound, substituents dictate the relative contribution of resonance forms A, B, C and D. Their observations hold true for many types of acidic species, thus a simple bond length calculation can replace an experimental measurement of the pKa. Their method is called Ab Initio Bond Lengths PKA, or ABLE PKA. Their research shows that the relationship between bond lengths and PKA values allows remarkably accurate predictions to be made. This provides researchers with invaluable insight into how potential future drugs react in the body. The tool has been successfully applied to several classes of organic molecules, including some for which previous methods proved to be highly unreliable. For example, this method works when there is more than one ionization site of a compound, that is, where the proton can be removed from more than one position within the structure. The ABLE tool can also be used to study compounds that exist as tautomers, subtly different forms of the same molecule that continually interconvert. The ABLE PKA method accounts for geometric effects such as intramolecular hydrogen bonding and steric effects in molecules. ABLE works with the full 3D structure. Even if a molecule has multiple protonation sites, ABLE only requires calculation of a single state, making it computationally efficient compared to other methods which use a quantum chemical approach. Not only has ABLE been used to correct experimental pKa values, it also has strong potential to become a powerful routine tool for drug screening in the future.